What are you reading? The Dance of Dragons. What's it about? It's the story of the fight between Rhaenyra Targaryen and her half-brother Aegon for control of the Seven Kingdoms. Both of them thought they belonged on the Iron Throne. When people started declaring for one of them or the other, their fight divided the kingdoms in two. Brothers fought brothers. Dragons fought dragons. By the time it was over, thousands were dead. And it was a disaster for the Targaryens as well. They never truly recovered. The dance of dragons. Why is that a dance? It's just what they call it. It made much sense. I think it's poetic. If you had to choose between Rhaenyra and Aegon, who would you have chosen? I wouldn't have chosen either. I saw the choosing sides that made everything so horrible. Sometimes a person has to choose. Sometimes the world forces his hand. If a man knows what he is, and remains true to himself. The choice is no choice at all. He must fulfill his destiny and become who he is meant to be. However much he may hate it. Well, YouTube, thanks for tuning in. And uh, today we're going to talk about now that the penultimate episode of um, of Game of Thrones is about to air. One that I believe, you know, for lack of better purpose, we'll call like the Battle for the Seven Kingdoms. I think by the end of this episode, we're going to have to be dealing with who's actually going to sit on the Iron Throne after. And if we were to look at this clip with Shireen, we would assume that she was talking about Danny and John. And the obvious answer is, is that, that they should just rule together. But, and I mean, two episodes ago, Varys, um, Davos, and Tyrion were all discussing the idea that they marry together, but the show's been trying really hard to put a divide in our heroes, and it's gone so far as that Varys, who was vying for the option to marry them together, is now at this point saying that, no, if they marry together, she's just going to manipulate Jon and be the one in control all along. I think that part of this is a misdirect. Part of it, I believe, because... We've gone, we've been following Danny all along, thinking she's going to win, she's going to win, and she's going to rule, she's going to break the wheel. But I think they just don't want us to believe that the show's going to end that predictably. So I think part of this is actually that there isn't as much tension as there really is. They just want it to be less clear as to how it's going to end. I think they want us to be guessing. Whether that's a good thing or not, I, I'm inclined to think to disagree because I think it, it upsets some people. Um, but that being said, I don't know that that clip is actually about foreshadowing Danny and John. It could be, it could very well be, but in, in, in fact, I think actually it's about Tyrion and Danny. And right about now you're being, what? How could it be Tyrion? Well, let me tell you a story. Um, they're both bastards. They're, well, all three of them are bastards of sorts. Uh, you have Danny, who was expelled from her country and had to live in exile and work her way back. You have John, who was literally told he's a bastard his whole life, who's gone out and gone, always been an outsider, even in the Any in man the role, who must say, in, I in the am north, the he's king always, no matter no where he is, he's an outsider. King. And then you have Tyrion, who's treated like this. You do well to remember that, you little monster. Oh, I'm a monster. Perhaps you should speak to me more softly then. Monsters are dangerous, and just now kings are dying like flies. I wish I was the monster you think I am. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. I would gladly give my life to watch you all swallow it. Samarin! Samarin! Escort the prisoner back to his cell. I will not 
give my life for Joffrey's murder, and I know I'll get no justice here, so I will let the gods decide my fate. You know, you have always had people calling him a monster, and it's because he's a dwarf, and the fact of the matter is, is, is that I'm going to propose that he is a bastard, just not, not in the sense that we're thinking. I'm thinking that he's actually the Mad King's son and Danny's half-brother, which would make Shireen's comments more poignant. Easy for me, is it? When have you ever done something that wasn't in your interest, but solely for the benefit of the family? The day that you were born. I wanted to carry you into the sea and let the waves wash you away. Instead, I let you live. And I brought you up as my son. Because you're a Lannister. So Tyrion confronts them and says, you know, when was the last, when was the last time you did something for your family? And he says, the day you were born. You know, he wanted to drown him. He wanted to kill him. He says, I brought you up as my son because you're a Lannister. So let's not forget that Tyr Tywin's m wife, Tyrion's mother, was actually Tywin's cousin. So that means that Tyrion, regardless of who his parents are, or regardless of who his actual father is, would still technically be, well, not technically, would still actually be a Lannister. He just wouldn't be Tywin's. So it's still in the best interest of his family to uh, kind of hold on to this. Because it, Tyr Tywin's the sort of person who will hold on to information, who will hold on to an ace in the hole. And if it ever became beneficial to him that people did cry for a, a Targaryen heir, well, he just happens to have been raising one for his whole entire life. So it would be super convenient. And then, if you still doubt me, look at this scene. crossbow who released you uh, your brother I expect he always had a soft spot for you Come, we'll go and talk in my chambers this is how you want to speak to me hmm? shaming your father has always given you pleasure all isn't my it? life you've wanted me dead Yes, but you refuse to die. I respect that, even admire it. You fight for what's yours. I'd never let them execute you. Is that what you fear? I'll never let ill in pain take your head. You're a Lannister. You're my son. I loved her. Who? Shay. Oh, Tyrion. Put down that crossbow. I murdered her. With my own hands. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She was a whore. Say that word again. And what? You'll kill your own father in the privy? No. You're my son. Now, enough of this nonsense. I am your son, and you sentenced me to die. You knew I didn't poison Joffrey, but you sentenced me all the same. Why? Enough. We'll go back to my chambers and speak with some dignity. I can't go back there. She's in there. Are you afraid of a dead whore? <laughs> Oh. 
help me. First, you know, Tyrion approaches him with the crossbow and he claims, you're my son, don't do this. But after he shoots him, after he shoots him, that's when he says, you're no son of mine. And I don't think it's because he betrayed him. I think it's just now that he's been shot, there's no threat of life. There's no sweet talking Tyrion anymore. It's just the straight up honest truth. You're, he's going to die. So he's telling him, you were never my son. So and then let's not forget also this scene. Um, as like my last final piece of evidence uh, where Tyrion actually frees the dragons. He tentatively walks up to it and tells it this story. Well, you will watch it. I'm friends with your mother. I'm here to help. Don't eat the help. When I was a child, an uncle asked what gift I wanted for my name day. I begged him for one of you. It wouldn't even have to be a big dragon, I told him. Be little like me. Everyone laughed like it was the funniest thing they'd ever heard. Then my father told me the last dragon had died a century ago. I cried myself to sleep that night. Here you are. Next time I have an idea like that, punch me in the face. So Tyrion tentatively goes up to the dragons and he tries to placate them by, you know, telling them a story of how he grew up wanting to have a dragon and, and that he dreamed of dragons. And he tells them how he's friends with their mother. I don't think that the dragons here let him turn them loose because he was turning them loose. I, I honestly think that the reason why they respond to him is, is that he is a Targaryen. Dragons, for whatever reason, have just always been able to sense who is and isn't a Targaryen. Hence why they let John touch them last season, ride them now. I think had had they not lost a dragon early on, I think we could have seen Targaryen or we could have seen Tyrion ride a dragon. I also don't know that we haven't seen the last of dragons because if we remember back to when Tyrion was passing through Valeria, a dragon passes over top of them and it has the same coloring as Drogon, but I'm not convinced that that actually is Drogon. And so that if that's the case, I think we may end up seeing before the end that they go back and pick up more dragons. That would, that's, that's my honest hope anyways, is that we see them go back and pick up dragons. 
and come in and just, you know, kill folk that deserve to be killed. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So I think personally, here's my prediction in the end. Uh, or let's watch this last clip again um, before my closing thoughts and we'll watch. Just watch it with the intent of wondering what if Shireen is talking about this story and think about it in the idea of a Tyrion and Danny thing. What are you reading? The Dance of Dragons. What's it about? It's the story of the fight between Rhaenyra Targaryen and her half by the Regan for control of the Seven Kingdoms. Both of them thought they belonged on the Iron Throne. When people started declaring for one of them or the other, their fight divided the kingdoms in two. Brothers fought brothers. Dragons fought dragons. By the time it was over, thousands were dead. And it was a disaster for the Targaryens as well. They never truly recovered. The dance of dragons. Why is that a dance? It's just what they call it. It doesn't make much sense. I think it's poetic. If you had to choose between Rhaenyra and Aegon, who would you have chosen? I wouldn't have chosen either. Just all the choosing sides that made everything so horrible. Sometimes a person has to choose. Sometimes the world forces his hand. If a man knows what he is and remains true to himself, the choice is no choice at all. He must fulfill his destiny and become who he is meant to be. However much he may hate it. All right, thanks for thanks for putting up with this video. Uh, here's what I believe. I think John's going to go back to the north. Uh, when he said goodbye to Tormund, it seemed to me when you say something like you never know and he left Ghost to go up north and Tormund was telling him, you know, you've got the north in you. I believe that John's going to end up going back to the north for one reason or another and ruling up there. I wouldn't be shocked if, um, well, I, I honestly believe that in the end, Tyrion's going to be the one that sits on the Iron Throne or its equivalency in T King's Landing if the throne itself isn't destroyed. I think that, you know, he's suited for ruling throughout the whole series they've shown that he likes ruling he's suited for it and if he has the right name and he has the better claim if he is danny's half brother he has a better claim than john would so i honestly think he's gonna end up there and if danny survives i think she'll either follow john or live in dragonstone if not going back to Essos and ruling there what do you think is going to happen uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll uh, see you next time. Stay awesome.